found me, you freed me, held back the waters for my release. good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Uh, let's, no, thank you for being here. And remember, we have tacos after the service, so feel free to stay and enjoy some free food. <laughs> All right. Let's pray. Praise the Lord. All right. And if you could bow your heads, let's pray for the service this morning. Heavenly Father, I thank you for today's service. I pray that you can just bless the words of pastor as he speaks to us. Let, let your word speak through him and let it penetrate our hearts and our souls. Teach to us what you want us to learn through pastor and through the message this morning. Thank you for the worship that, that you have allowed us to be in your presence this morning and to worship you and at your throne. Pray all these things in your name that today can just be a blessed day. Amen. Amen. Amen.
child belongs to you. And every fear I lay at your feet, I'll sing through the night. Oh God, that belongs to you. Would you just give the Lord a hand?
Give the Lord a hand of praise this morning. Are you a child of God this morning? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated for a moment as we prepare for offering. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning. We get to have the childlike faith. So beautiful just to have t the kids in here and worshiping with us and can feel his presence. He's here. He can touch and he can move as we take tithe and offering. God, we just thank you, Father Lord. We thank you for everything that you do, Father God. God, everything that you do. We just give it all to you, Father God. We give all of everything to you, Father God. Our pain, our suffering, our things that we're going through, God. The storm, it's all in your hands, God. We lay it all at your feet right now, Father God. God, that we can hear from you today, Father Lord. That you would just move, Father God, on the, your people, Father God. Speak to each and every one. That we can go home, change, and not the same, Father Lord. God, we just thank you, Father God. God, Jesus for everyone. Jesus for everyone. Jesus for everyone, Jesus. Thank you, Father Lord. And Jesus, we just thank you in Jesus in your name. Amen.
You may be seated this morning. Alicia, come here for a second. She loves this about as much as I love uh, the, <laughs> the moments of uh, coming together like this and being in front of people. Um, uh, one thing I, I did realize this morning that, um, that we, we, we tend to like to sway the same in worship. And uh, we were bumping and rubbing shoulders a little bit. But you did a wonderful job. I just want to encourage you in, in that. I want to encourage all of our kids. Yes. This Amen. Morning. They touched me this morning. I was uh, what, up here, or was sitting over there and watching some of the little ones, and they were raising their hands and touching their heart and yeah. singing to their Lord. That touches me. <laughs> the Lord is good. You may be seated this morning as we, uh, as we begin to uh, move into our message here in just a moment. Um, but uh, yeah, today is family worship. And uh, we, a lot, some of our kids aren't here today. Some are out of town. Uh, but I praise God for those that are here. And, yes, uh, yeah. and Elijah, he practiced worship with us today. And um, God is good. And yes, we have some yeah. other talent that is here with our young people. And they're, we're going to be having them more involved as well. And so I'm just so grateful for what yes. the Lord is doing yes, and, uh, and working in our, uh, in our young people in our church. Amen. Um, I, I do... Um, let, let's go ahead and start. Uh, you want to start with, with this here then? Okay. Um, so if you're new or anything, we just want to get to know you, and we have a special gift. This is um, just a Connect card just to fill out and stuff. It's in the back of the chairs. Um, and if you don't have one, if there, you can't find one, our ushers or greeters can help you with that. And just put it in the offering or give it to the or hand it to the ushers and stuff. We just want to connect with you. And if there's anything we can help or pray with for you, with you, um, you can also write that down, and we will pray for that too. And, and also, this is is this is not so that we'll solicit you and no, you keep don't. calling you. Hey, uh, but this is just for us to connect and and that uh, we'll we'll connect with you, and then you'll have our number and all that as well. Yes. Uh, but we just want to be able to connect with those um, that uh, that are part. You're here for a reason, Amen. and uh, we want to bless you yes. and um, encourage you. And so uh, our announcements uh, this morning. We have our regular announcements, but we have our uh, tacos after service yes. and just that time of fellowship. Yes. It's Bloon Rally weekend here in Prosser and yeah. a lot of busyness and things going on. And we're going to have a, 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 some tacos, tacos afterwards and a time of fellowship. Um, but we also, this on Thursday nights, we have... Um, and actually on Thursday mornings, we also have Thursday mornings if you ha are available, ladies or anybody. It's open, actually, anybody. We're just a time of um, interceding for our country, for our nations, for our church, for our um, town, for our community. We just really intercede, and we take it that it's t at 10 on Thursday mornings, um, every Thursday morning here at the church. And it's just a great time to break through and pray for um, those needs. And they, we've seen answers. We've seen answers, and it's also interceding for our families, but in a corporate way. And so it, it, we've seen answers, and so it's a great time to come together in prayer. And then that Thursday night, um, we have two more classes, our women's um, Bible study, and it's in Nehemiah, and it's at Renee's house. So if you need, if you want to join, it's come and join. It's just been a great time, and to get to um, dive in and with Nehemiah, and just to really intercede with the fellowship with the ladies and stuff. And we've had a good time with that, and that's at 6:30 at Renee's. And then also, ladies, in October 15th, um, there will be a craft class starting. And so if you want, or if you're wanting, if you like to do crafts or anything like that, there is a time on Tuesdays. It will be here on Tuesdays. And um, Darlene um, Burns will start doing um, teaching if somebody wants to learn how to do quilts. Um, but you can also bring your own crafts, too. There, we have some people that do crochet. We have people do make cards or whatever it may be. It's just a time of um, ladies to get together and have a time of craft, and that will start on August 5th, or 15th at 1 to 4. October. October, excuse me. October, You have a lot August. of time to prepare. Uh, <laughs> October 15th, 1 to 4, 
and um, that will just be a great time also to have some fellowship too. Um, we have uh, our, our building project. We're getting closer to uh, getting ready for that. Um, I talked to the, the contractor this last week, and he's ready to go when we're ready to go. Um, but we are trying, we're, we're getting really close. We're trying to raise about $4,000 more. And if you feel to give to the building fund, um, uh, just mark it on your envelope, and we're getting really close to being there. And we'll start our project. Uh, I don't have the pictures up today, but uh, of uh, redoing some of our windows, repainting, uh, replacing, and doing uh, some of the fascia uh, on the outside of the building here, and just uh, finish finish that project and uh, make sure beautifying the, the house of the Lord. And uh, ultimately, we are the house of the Lord, uh, but this is the place that we gather, and this is the place that, that represents uh, the, the church and uh, in our community. And so um, if you feel to give to that, uh, you can give to that at any, any time. You can give online. Uh, there's a, even on the back uh, table there, you can give an offering uh, for that. Just mark it so we know where to put it. Um, also, uh, Youth Night uh, is, is October 20th at 6 p.m. Um, we had to do some changes because of uh, scheduling, and so that will be coming up as well. Um, and uh, any other main announcements that we want to make today? Oh, in your bulletin, I think you do have um, a, a financial report and some uh, updates on this last eight months of the church. And so that just kind of gives everybody uh, an idea where we've been, where we're at and what's coming in. And so um, those that are, are giving, uh, you can take a look at that. And some of that also is included of what we already raised for the building fund. So some of that ones that we didn't want to go in debt. And so that's what shows that we are not going to go in debt. We're going to be able to pay and that's where that remaining 4000 will go to and stuff. And so that's where the church is not in debt. So thank the Lord that God is good. And we get to see God's glory through everything that he wants us to do. Not us, but what he wants us to do. And so, yes, thank you for your giving. And uh, we have a giving church. And so grateful for each and every one of you guys. Um, that, that makes a difference. Also, we have uh, some things that will be coming up and that will be announced uh, soon. Um, but uh, we are uh, developing and creating an evangelism and outreach team. And, um, and so if you're interested in that, let us know. And this will uh, be a team or a committee that, that brainstorms and, and thinks up and comes up with a plan throughout the year uh, for our outreach and for our evangelism and, uh, and reaching our community and, um, and be a, a prayer for that. And, and so um, if you're interested in that, let us know. And that will be uh, a part of the church. One of the main engines of the church is outreach. And so we want, uh, we want to put an emphasis on that and so, um, and those are some of the things that will be coming up. Anything else? And yeah, there's also any other opportunity you want to volunteer. We do have other teams that you can also be a part if that is not one of the areas that you want to be in part. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come to you right now in your mighty name, Jesus. Lord, I thank you for all that you do. Lord, Julie and I, Lord God, we just give you praise and we give you glory, Lord God, for this church and Lord, for the people that are here and Lord Jesus, Lord, together this morning, we agree together, Lord, that you would bless your people, that you would encourage your people. I pray, Lord God, that Lord, that you would set free your people, Lord Jesus, to be, Lord, uh, Lord, to be set at liberty in you, to walk in freedom, Lord God, to walk in you and in your presence and in the power of your might, Lord God, not their own strength, but God, the strength that you give. And so, Lord Jesus, I pray for a refreshing upon every heart and life. Lord, we pray for refreshing yes. upon every heart and life. And Lord, I pray, Lord Jesus, as God, that you have provided, Lord God, Lord, uh, a way for us to come to you. And Lord Jesus, you are our healer. And Lord, I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would heal your people, that you would touch them, Lord God, right now. And even those, Lord Jesus, that are not here today because they're not feeling well. Lord God, there is a few, and Lord, I pray that you would just meet with them right where they're at, and God, that you would touch their bodies, quicken them, give them strength, oh God, I pray, and Lord, we just give you all the praise and the glory for this. Lord, I pray, Lord Jesus, God, that as we go into your word today, God, that I would be hidden behind your cross, that you would be seen and glorified in everything that is said and done, and Lord, we just give you all everything today. We lay all things at your feet and we give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone said, amen. amen.
God is so good. I'm going to uh, get this open here. Um, or need, I don't need that right here yet. Thank you. Um, today, as we have finished um, our, uh, our series about worry and anxiety, and one of the reasons why we talked about that was because it's one of the things that plagues our nation. It plagues even those within the church. Many uh, that, are, uh, that are in this world, have the enemy has brought such a, um, an oppression of worry and anxiety. And Jesus gives us some simple words for us not to worry about those things. And, um, and so we, we had three parts of that. You can go back online and you can check those things, uh, check those messages out. But today we are going to be moving into a, uh, a sermon series that has to do with the Lord's Prayer. Jesus tells us to pray in this manner. These are words from Jesus Christ in telling us how we approach God and how we pray to God. And so the message uh, series title is Thine is the Kingdom. And uh, we're going to look at this and we're going to pray like Jesus said. Jesus tells us. The disciples go to Jesus and, and John taught his disciples how to pray. And, and Jesus' disciples come to him and they say, Lord, teach us how to pray. Show us how to pray. And so today we're going to be talking about prayer as we're going in, uh, into this series um, and looking at this, uh, Jesus teaches us how to pray, how to be effective. Many have quoted, many have memorized this portion of Scripture. How many has this? Oh, no, I'm not going to point people out for that. But many of us has memorized this Scripture and this portion of Scripture. Uh, some just pray these words, and sometimes um, we don't follow the direction of the words that are given to us. Um, but Jesus tells us, pray in this manner, not just these words, but pray in this manner. Um, there's an outline that is given to us from Jesus himself. How many want to receive Jesus' word? Amen. How many know that if you receive Jesus' word, it's going to make a difference in your life, right? Uh, some do this prayer just like Jesus said not to do in verse 7. Uh, Jesus says, when you pray, don't use vain repetitions, Okay. Jesus is specific because the Pharisees, they would go and they would pray and they would say these uh, repetitions over and over again, almost like a chant. And they would say it over and over again. And, and Jesus gives this, this, this prayer for us, but he says to pray uh, not these words specifically over and over again, but he says to pray in this manner with the meaning that is behind it. Because sometimes if we go into just vain repetitions and saying it over and over again, we lose the meaning of what Jesus is wanting us to do. And Jesus has called us. Uh, he has called us not just to be repetitive, but we have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And we can boldly approach the throne of grace because of what Jesus accomplished on the cross for you and I. And so Jesus tells us how to pray. And uh, it is good to memorize this. It is good to have this in our hearts. Uh, but I want to just dig a little bit deeper that maybe we can grab a hold of what Jesus is saying and that we can see Jesus for who he is and we can approach Jesus in the way that he has called us to approach him. And so today, uh, as we look at this, uh, my focus is going to be on just the, uh, the four words of prayer in this outline. So if we can br bring it up on there this morning, uh, but also if you have your Bibles in Matthew 6, 9 through 13, Jesus teaches us how to pray. It says, in this manner, therefore pray, our Father in heaven. And that's where our focus is going to be today. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So my two points this morning are going to be just those two, uh, those four words, our father in uh, our father in heaven. And so 
Number one, we're going to be talking about our Father. And within that, we're going to be talking about our approach and the connection that we have with God. We, because of Jesus Christ, once again, this is, this is foundational. This is, this is powerful for you and I. We can approach God and we can call him Father. Amen. He is our Father. And we have a connection to him. And in this world, there is this temptation to place God as just this, some, somebody who's just, or, or something that is just distant and far away and is unapproachable. But Jesus says, I am not far away. I am approachable, and you can come to me. And then number two, we're going to be talking about in heaven. And we're going to talk about not just where Jesus is placed in heaven, but uh, his position that Jesus is above all. And so just in these four simple words, there is, a, there is power behind what Jesus is saying in when we pray in this manner. Some titles have meaning, some do not in this world. But they're, uh, but they're used to be a time when we had great respect for someone with certain titles. Um, this was because it was, it was a reverence and respect for what people did. And if you called somebody doctor, you call them a doctor because they got their doctorate or they went through the schooling and they did all the things to get that title. Um, it carried some weight. It had uh, some things. It had weight behind the title. Um, king. We don't have a king in this country. Uh, but there was a time over in other countries where the, the, uh, the king, that title, was the most powerful title that was in that country or in that nation. They were it. What they said went. And it had a, very, had a lot of power uh, and authority behind the title king. General, president, um, sir, miss, miss, Mrs., Mr., boss. Even to this day, there are titles within the realm of relationship uh, are to a degree they're honored and they're still honored within our society. Um, but we have gotten away from some of those things. And so our understanding within our society is not the same as what it used to be when you would read certain things. And, uh, but there is titles that, that God gives. There's father and there's mother. Those are our titles. God says to honor your father and your mother. Um, but those are titles that are given that have a certain connection. And there's a respect many times behind them. Yet, when, even when I say that, some maybe even in this room didn't have the best connection with a father or a mother. And that you, you don't connect with that title in the same way because maybe they, it was a bad experience. Um, police officers or officer, uh, they have uh, an authority behind what they say because they have been sanctioned by the state or by, uh, by the country or wherever that they're serving. Uh, the, a police officer has a certain amount of authority. So when they say stop in the name of the law, they have authority that is behind them that they can actually arrest you. They can give you a ticket and they can throw you in prison. And so many, because of uh, uh, the authority type of respect for an officer, some people don't have that. But some people are like, well, I don't want to get, get arrested. So I have a respect uh, for that position, and I, give a, I have a respect for that title. Um, my son, uh, when he uh, first heard the, that term, I don't know, he heard it on a cartoon or he heard it on a TV show. And, and so, but he would always get it wrong. Um, and so when he was playing, he would always say, not stop in the name of the law. He would say, stop in the name of the Lord. And, <laughs> And then, and then when I was playing with him, and the, you know, I have a great honor and respect for the name of the Lord. I'm like, okay. I, I, even though we're playing, I'm like, okay, I need to stop right now because I honor the name of God. I honor the name of the Lord, and he is my Lord, and he is my Savior. So with the title of Lord or, or our Father or Savior, um, it, you know, even in the name of Jesus, you know, when he said that, there was a respect that was there behind the name because of who we know, of who I know, our Father. Although he has a position of great power, he gives this invitation saying, uh, our Father, you are the one that we belong to. I knew kids growing up, and their dad told them he was a pastor. He says, when we're at church, I want you to call me pastor. And for me... 
I, I see things a little bit differently. I, I get the honor and the respect here at the church. Many of the, the, young, the young kids, they call me pastor. And, uh, and so my kids, uh, they, started, they were starting to call me pastor. I said to them, I said, I'm your father. I am your dad. And, uh, and I told them that the greatest title that God has given me in this life, the greatest titles God has given me is husband and father. And my connection to you as you are my children, father is the greatest, the greatest title that I could be given. And husband, my, uh, being a husband to my wife. These are the two greatest uh, titles that I honor and I, I take and, and I, I see as a couple of the greatest titles that I could have because of the connection and the relationship that come with those titles. Pastor is a great, uh, is a great thing in the sense of that uh, God has put me here, that God has Place me in a place where, uh, where we're family and we're connected. Uh, but there's this connection that comes with a father. And that's what I want to look at. How does this tie in with the Lord's Prayer? It has to do with the one who the person is behind the title, and that is Father. Our Father. Jesus tells us in this first portion of the prayer that sometimes many of us miss. It is an invitation to be able to approach God in a much closer way. Not this God that is distant, that is far off. And so when Jesus teaches us to pray in this manner, he, he tells us, Our Father who are in heaven, our Father. Father who are in heaven, that we can say, not I can say my Father, our Father, that we have a connection with God, that He is our God, that He is our Father, and that we are His children. And we can approach God in a way that is closer than what we've seen throughout the past. Here in this scripture, it's not talking about Abba Father. That's a whole nother, a whole nother word that is there, or Daddy. But this is talking about our Father, the one who has given, uh, that is uh, our connection, our family, our, the one that is the head of the home. This Father that is used throughout scripture is the, the, the one that is the good Father. It is the same type of Father that when Jesus talks about with the prodigal son, that father, the one that was loving, the one that was caring, the one that loved his son so much that when he asked for his inheritance, he says, go ahead and take your inheritance. He takes his inheritance and he, he does what he wants with it and he, he squanders it and it goes away and he finds himself in the, with the pigs and, and he's looking at his life and he's looking at all the, these things that he used to have when he was a part of his father's home and he looks in his life and he says, my, my father's servants have it better than I have it right now. I have, got, I have lost everything but I know that I have a father that is still where I left him. I know I have a father that, that is there, and maybe I can go back to him, and maybe I, he, I could be like one of his hired servants because I don't deserve to be called his son anymore. That same name and that same word for father is the same one that we're talking about today when Jesus says, our father who aren't, art in heaven, or our father who is in heaven, the prodigal son goes back and he, he goes back and he comes and it says when, when he begins to walk down the road that his father sees him and he chases and he goes and he embraces him and, and he puts on a feast because he says, my son was lost, but now he's found and he's back home. This father that cares, this father who loves this father who is waiting with open arms, this father that when the son comes back, he doesn't throw him away, he doesn't make him a hired hand, but he brings him back as like nothing had ever happened before. And the son comes home and he prepares a feast. He wraps his arms around his son's neck and he brings him back in. The father never stopped loving the son. The son went his own way. The father never left the son. The son went his own direction, but he comes back and he is received with open arms. This is the father I'm talking about when Jesus says, pray in this manner. Pray in this manner. Our father, 
When we say that, we can even look and imagine the prodigal son in, in his first words of, of this, this feeling of, I don't deserve to be called your son. But Jesus invites us. He invites us to call him father. How special is that this morning? Father God was not commonly referred to as Father in the Old Testament out of the 39 books of the Old Testament books uh, and, and thousands of years of time in history. Only on 15 occasions does the Old Testament talk about God in, in the sense of Father, that us calling God Father in that connection of what we're talking about today. There are only a, a few of those places within the Old Testament where it talks about God as a Father, and that is David when he's talking about God as Father. And this connection that he has with God. Most of those referred to him as father of creation, and there was not this personalness in the Old Testament of, of actually being able to call God our father. I want to point out here, Jesus says when we pray, we are to approach God as a father, someone that we belong to, someone we have a close connection to, someone we trust who will take care of us, someone we allow to discipline us, someone we trust to guide us into the right direction, someone we can trust to teach us good things. This is where God, in this manner, Jesus says, pray in this manner, our Father who are in heaven. Many of us have a hard time to look God at this manner because, we, because of an experience that we have or no experience with an earthly father. This is very sad because many of us will, will try to make connections here on this earth to try to connect with God and to see what we see here in our understanding of who God is. But that's okay because I'm not comparing God to your earthly father. I want to say that again. I'm not comparing God to your earthly father because there is no comparison to him. We don't look at our earthly fathers to be a good example of God. I want to say that one more time. We don't look at our earthly fathers to get a good example of God. We look to God for, to get a good example for our fathers. All right, so sometimes we try to do it the wrong way and we look at people, we look at man and we look at, well, I can't see God in a good light because of what I've seen here on this earth. But the only good glimpse that we get of a good father, you have to go to the scripture. You have to go to the Bible. You're not going to be able to look at your dad. You're not going to be able to look at someone else's dad. You're not going to be able to look at somebody here on this earth and get a good example of the good father, the perfect father that Jesus invites us to pray to and to call and to say, our Father, who are in heaven. Matthew 23, 9 says, Do not call anyone on earth your Father, for one is your Father, he who is in heaven. All right. Do not call anyone on earth your Father, for one is your Father, he who is in heaven. Talking about those who try to be in the place of God for people. Jesus says, don't call anyone, don't put someone in that position. Don't put someone as that spiritual authority over you or that, that place of, of where God should be. God should be recognized and seen as your heavenly father. And so Jesus warns against some that might look to those that are in this, in this world to be in place of God. And there is, God is, sits on the throne. Jesus is at the right hand of the Father. There is one place, there is one true Father that we can look to and that we can see and that we can truly call Father. Now, I'm not saying that we can't call our, our dads on earth Father, and that's not what Jesus was saying. What Jesus was saying, you don't put somebody in that place where God should be. Amen. You don't put someone in that place where God should be in that place. In the New Testament, Jesus refers to God as Father more than 165 times. The difference, not only did he call him Father, now this is good, not only did he call him Father, but he invites us to call him Father as well. This amazing shift to this personal relationship we have with God, God 
that is still God, but we have been adopted by him and that we can have this connection to him and he is our good father. I want, this morning, I, I want us to grab a hold of just this first just this first part here because I actually think that there might be some healing that needs to happen in your heart and in your life because in your approach to God, that some may be here or some online may be having a difficult time just even calling him father. But you look to him, as scripture says, the father, the good father that was waiting for his son to return or his child to return. When we pray, we are to recognize this, the Bible says. We are to see this, and this should be a part of our approach and our prayer to God. This should be. This is what Jesus tells us to do. Our father who are in heaven. John tells us uh, nothing that was made that was made without him in our connection to our God. We are his children, and we have turned to him. The part of this outline of the prayer is powerful for us to look at because in just four words, it puts us in a place to truly meet with God intimately and closely and recognize who he is. With the King of kings and the Lord of lords, but he's our father. He's our father. I want to just give a quick example. There was a child. He was the prince of a country, and his father was the king. Here in this connection, he was, his father was the king over all the land. The child of the king Although his father was the king, the father had a child who was the prince. And the child of the king, because of the relationship of birth, could call him father. He was the one that was able to call him this because he was begotten of the father, because he belonged to the father, and he was his father. We worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He's king of all, the earth of heaven and earth. But if you have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have been adopted in, and you can call the King of kings and the Lord of lords Father. With the combination of these two instructions and how to pray, it gives us the personalness of God and the greatness of God in one short sentence and how we should approach not just the throne room, but approach God himself as with the prodigal son as he returned. Father equals closeness, family, inheritance, a name belonging and represent, covering, protection, love, forgiveness, this patience that we see with the heavenly father and the good father that we belong to he is our father and we can approach him in closeness we can approach him in a way that before we knew him and before we gave our hearts to him and before we adopted in we can approach him as our father in heaven number two and this is my last point this morning and there i'm sorry there's a lot in these, these two verses but i want us to grab a hold i want us to receive healing and i want us when we go to god i want us to pray like jesus said to pray i want to be able to go to the father i want to be able to see him for who he is and also this connection that that there is a personalness with god that when we ask something that he hears and when we ask something he answers and it is the same as when with i can see this only in in comparison although it is not perfect when my child comes to me and they ask for food, I am going to get them some food. If my child comes to me and says, I have a need, I, as a father, I'll say, I am going to meet that need and I will do what I can to be able to meet that need. There is something different with our relationship with God. He's not some distant God. He's our father. We can approach him. We can come to him and we can ask. In our Bible study in 1 John, it says that we can confidently ask, that we can confidently pray that we can come to him and we can ask and that he hears and that he answers because he's our father we belong to him and we are his children Amen. point number two who are in heaven in heaven in this verse is not just talking about this distant place but this is in the same manner that we see in uh in scripture in colossians 3 1 
in heaven, a place of position, not just location. It brings together two Greek words, oros and anno, becomes the word that is used here for heaven. And so this meaning, meaning a heavenly place that is above all, not just higher, but in position that is greater. That this above all means that he is sovereign over all things. That he is above all, that he's more powerful, that he's greater, that he's in charge of, that he is above all. This is just when, when this says our father in heaven, it's not just talking about, well, he's distant. He's in a location, but this is talking about God's position, that God is above all. So when we pray our Father who art in heaven, we're praying our, my Father, my God, that is above all, that is higher than all my problems, that is greater than all the circumstances that I, am, that I have in this world and in this life, that I, have, I am praying to the God that is above all, that sits above all, that is greater than all things. And again, we go to the example. I mean, this is the closest thing we have here on this earth. There are things that my son cannot do as a little boy. My son tries to do everything and wants to do everything. Yet, and even at his age, He's still, he's finding things a little bit humbling, trying to ask, he, he doesn't want to ask for dad's help. He wants to be a big boy. He's my big boy. I've called him that since he, <laughs> since he was born. He's my big boy and he's my buddy. And, uh, um, but there are times that he knows to come to me and to ask me because I'm bigger and because I'm stronger. And in this same manner, when we pray to God, when we say our Father, who in position is greater, stronger, above all things, we recognize him as being our strength and giving us the, and helping us to be able to go and do what we cannot do, to take us and give us the strength that we don't have that comes from him because he is in heaven. Above all, greater than all, the place and location and the part that is above. Now we pray when we know we are God's children, that we can pray to him, our father, the personal connection. And then secondly, in heaven, that he is above all. He's more powerful than all. He is greater than all things. And he is the God that we serve. So in this manner, I want us when we pray and we go before God that we recognize these two powerful things, that he's our father, we have a connection, but he is bigger and greater than all our situations and anything that happens on this earth. He is above all. Amen. Now we are asked to acknowledge who we are praying to, not just praying to some distant God, but to our father who is close yet higher and greater and more powerful than any of our problems. The same type of heaven or higher is in Colossians 3.1. It says, if then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of the Father. If then you were raised with Christ, this is saying if you have given your life to Jesus Christ, you believed on him as your Lord and Savior, that as Jesus was raised up from the dead, that we went from death and we went unto life. And, the, and here, when Paul is talking in Colossians, if you have been raised with Christ, that is meaning that you have been taken out of the grave. You have been taken out of death that is part of this life. And you have been raised with Christ. That as he is alive, now you can be alive. And, this, and it says, and these things which are above. And this is the same word that we're getting for heaven. These things which are above where Christ is sitting. This is saying that Paul is saying that we can now be lifted up into heavenly places. And we can rise above the situations that we're in and the things of this life and that we can be raised up with him. Christ is sitting where he's sitting at the right hand of God, that we can be taken in out of those things. And, and as Christ is raised up, we can be raised up with him. Seek the things that are above this earth, that are higher, that are greater. This is a part of this kingdom that we are a part of. Where it is settled 
and established on the true authority, our Father who art in heaven. The greatness of our God, the God who is in heaven. Acts 17, 24 says, God who made the whole world and everything in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands. The disciples hungry to know how to pray. Jesus tells them how to start off this prayer. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 says, Jesus and the Father are one. In this case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is in the image of God. John 14, 9 says, Jesus said to them, I have been with you so long and you still don't know me, Philip. Whoever has seen the father or whoever has seen me has seen the father. Whoever has seen me has seen the father. How can you say, show us the father? If you have seen Jesus, you have seen the father. Jesus teaches us something in two Simple words, our Father and in heaven. As we begin to close this message this morning, I want us to bow our heads. Jesus, 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 Jesus. As I say, I don't know exactly where everyone is at this morning. I don't know everyone's circumstances and everyone's hurts and everyone that the things and the difficulties that you have faced in this life in the past or even in the present. As a pastor, I, I hear about many things and I pray for those things. But I want to say to you this morning that If you have felt alone in this world, if you have felt that the Lord has been distant and you haven't felt like you could approach Him, I want to say to you this morning that Jesus, God, is your Father. He's not only the, cre the creator of all things, but he is the one who has adopted you into his family. That he never leaves you nor forsakes you. In this life, many times we have tried to go our own direction. We have tried to go our own way, but the father is always there with his arms wide open waiting for you. He's approachable. And when you approach him as, as his word says in this manner of praying, our Father, Lord, you're my Father. It is the same as when the prodigal started to come back to the Lord that his father ran to him and wrapped his arms around him and that he embraced him and that he placed him right where he was before. As his son in the position of inheritance and family and he loved on him. So if you're feeling alone this morning and you're feeling lonely this morning, would you call out to your father? Not like the father that you had here on this earth, but the one that we see in scripture that is waiting for you, that loves you, that wants the best for you, that has made a way for you. The one who knows the number of hairs that are on your head. That's thoughts towards you are more than the sand of the sea. Our Father, who is in heaven,
Maybe this morning you haven't been looking at him in, in the way that in recognizing him as Lord of all and that you can approach him and you can come to him as your father. He's bigger than all your situations. He's bigger than all your problems. He is greater. He is greater. He is more powerful. He is higher. He is above. And when you pray to him and when you're praying to him this morning, would you see him? Would you see him where he is placed? At the right hand of the Father, but also in position of authority and in the position to keep you, to protect you, to be with you, to guide you. Would you humble yourselves in this very moment and recognizing his greatness and his position of power? But don't lose your connection to him as your father. This morning, I'm just going to make a, a general call. If the Lord has spoke to your heart, maybe it's because you needed some healing, you needed some reassurance, and the Holy Spirit spoke to you through this message this morning, and you just you just want to you just need some prayer, and you want someone to come alongside you and agree with you and to pray with you in this moment as you meet with the Father, with as you meet with your Father this morning, being restored, being comforted, being strengthened. Maybe just going back into the right place of where you need to be with him. I'm just going to open up these altars. I'm going to give a time to pray. And for our altar workers, I want you just to be prepared and to be ready to meet those that come. And just be an, an extension of God's love for each one that comes up this morning. So I'm just going to take a moment here before we close the service. I don't want to leave without giving an opportunity. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we love you, God. We worship you, Lord. We pray. Mighty.